And it was at this point that Nick realized his clutch was f It's the video you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Mark V GTI eventually got it on the dyno, strapped down, set up, plugged in, everything initialized. First pull, wastegate only, clutch starts slip. Nightmare. You can see it on the dyno chart. You can see the torque just starts to build, then whoosh, falls off. You can see it on the video. You can see it in the logs. I've got the command center all set up here. I'll show you the logs. There we go. So white is RPM and it should go up nice and steady. And it went to the moon. Uh, the interesting thing here is that the yellow trace, that's the high pressure fuel pump. So I've been targeting about 130 bar and I've been hitting it. But when it does slip, obviously the engine RPM goes up. So therefore the mechanical high pressure fuel pump pressure goes up and it hits 160 bar. That's fault pressure. I rambled on about it in other videos. Now, if, if I still had the Mark V 140 bar sensor on there, then that's all I'd see, 140 bar, when the reality is it went to 160. I want to be able to see that, which is why I put the 200 bar real sensor out of Audi S3 and then scaled it in the map. So yeah, pretty important that, I think. I'm not going to lie, there's a little bit of it that's a bit good, but there's also another little bit of it where I'm just sort of used to this kind of stuff. This is dyno life. Um, clutches, if you ever take a chance on them, then oh, there's a good chance they're going to let you down. There's lots of cars that we've done where we do lots of work on them and the customer doesn't want to upgrade the clutch and then eventually goes on the dyno. First thing that goes, the clutch. Sometimes the clutch slips ever so slightly and you can adjust map into suit, but then sometimes it just whoosh goes <laughs> and they no mapping can sort that out. It's just simple as that. So yeah, a bit good. There's actually a few little upgrades on this car that I'll tell you about now. Can you guess what it is yet? The relocated diverter valve is probably the big giveaway. Um, this car has actually got a QO4 turbo now. I know I took a punt on that QO3 turbo and I was quite happy with it in all honesty to start with, but a characteristic of the QO3 turbo because they've got the diverter valve mounted on the compressor housing is that you do tend to hear the diverter opening a little bit when you put a hard pipe induction kit like the Forge one I've got. Um, if there's plenty of silicon on the intake pipe, then you don't tend to hear it as much, but on a solid pipe like that, it tends to reverberate a bit and um, in all honesty, I don't like it. <laughs> so uh, I drove it for a little bit, even on waste gear pressure, and I just I wasn't too happy about the, the diverter squeal. There was nothing to do with the diverter. It's just the way that that turbo had been machined out a little bit. Um, it just, it wasn't great. It wasn't a great option. So I decided I don't really want that squeal. So I'm gonna go to a KO4 setup. So I literally just decided, pull the turbo off, replace it with a KO4. Now you'd think fitting the KO4 turbo might actually make a good video. But in the words of that great American lyricist, Shaggy, <laughs> it wasn't me. I actually didn't fit the turbo on this one. Carl, my mechanic, did, top bloke. Um, he actually liked the KO3 turbo, so uh, we did a little bit of a deal where he fitted the KO4 for me while I was off on holiday for a few days, and uh, he got the KO3. So if you are wanting to see how well that KO3 did, then stay tuned because um, we will be tuning that, but just not on this car. We'll be doing it on Carl's Mark V GTI instead. So there it is, Cal and Nafaz uh, were mechanics here, yeah, they fitted the turbo for us, which is awesome. And uh, I didn't even know about it until I got back after a few days, which is pretty friggin' cool. I mean, the best type of modifications are the ones you don't have to do yourself, aren't they? <laughs> I know it doesn't make great YouTube content, but uh, phew, it is what it is. It's worth mentioning all that I didn't just go for a stock KO4 turbo, so it is a KO4 turbo that's had a little bit of porting on the uh, actual manifold itself. Uh, so I'm hoping that it, it flows a little bit better. It's got a full billet uh, anti-surge core in it, uh, along with a forge actuator set up exactly like I did in the last video. So, I mean, it's still, you know, the, the boost settings and everything should still be pretty similar, but this turbo will be capable of a lot more flow, uh, which will mean more power, hopefully. Uh, and then on top of that, the anti-surge properties. So, if anyone knows anything about KO4 turbos, you know that they essentially produce far too much boost low RPM for the engine to consume and therefore that backs up and creates a, a phenomenon called surge. Um, I won't have to deal with surge on this one because this one uh, is an anti-surge core and it has slightly cut back blades uh, to prevent the surge happening. So it'll be pretty cool to unleash almighty hell with this turbo and see what it does. I'll probably be right on the limit of what this car can take front wheel drive. But I've got that five map boost profile on so when we set that up 
uh, you know, when I sort my clutch out, <laughs> then we'll be able to, you know, set up a couple of different maps, uh, maybe it's a full all out, all the boosts, no surge kind of thing, but also a bit of a linear one, just in case, whoa, uh, nearly died there. <laughs> just in case uh, it's wet, you know, because then it'll be just wheel spin city. Another little upgrade that I've done lately as well as I fitted this uh, Edition 30 interior, which I absolutely love. This is the best interior for a Mark V uh, GTI, in my opinion. Uh, I've done the full uh, conversion. The full door cards. Riaz door cards. Ah, there's my other hat. I even tracked the car to some fresh mats. Oh, look at that. You can tell it's winter. Nice GTI, new old stock. I got some mats off Mark Weather, which is much appreciated, pal. He brought them down when we did some work for him, so that's awesome. The only thing that's missing out this interior now is the wiring for the heated seats. So these are heated edition 30 seats, but I wasn't pulling the wiring out the other car. Like, there's absolutely no chance of that happening. So <laughs> I've ordered up a Kufatech loom uh, from the Deutschland. Uh, and as soon as that lands, I'll be able to wire in the heated seats and get them going because it's freezing at the minute so them heat seats will be nice on me little bomb bomb they will need a bit of modification though because uh, i think they're only come for a left-hand drive car so they're going to need a bit of chop and splice and blah 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 but we'll we'll deal with that uh we'll just pull the front seats out bits of the under part of the dash and carpet and then we'll get the, the loom in i'll probably make a video on it you know i'm gonna make more videos this year without a doubt i've re-strategized a little bit in terms of my time and which means i'm going to have more time to make videos so hopefully you're going to be able to enjoy that and the content that i can make another little upgrade right in there that you can't really see at the back end last year me and colin got invited down to a track day at uh brands hatch by s performance uh jamie hayes thanks very much pal and uh <laughs> we wanted to go but we realized didn't really have a track course what we're going to do and i just thought sod it let's take the mark five it was on a base map a very good base map very safe base map so i just ran it on low boost and the only upgrade that we did to the car, give it a bit of a service again, was we upgraded the brakes. Uh, pads are from Tarox, they're coarser pads. They're meant to be very similar to 2500s. And I have to say, they are, they, they catch you out that good. They're like, wow, they're mint. So uh, that and some RBF 600 brake fluid. But uh, just like Shaggy says, I didn't do that either. Our apprentice mechanic, JK, did the brake pad and uh, fluid flush for for RBF 600 as well. Um, and so yeah, that was awesome for him to do that. Nice little job for apprentice mechanic. And he, he did a cracking job and he's doing really well, I have to say. And apart from the clutch, I have to say the car's running absolutely mint. I'm really, really happy with how it drives and everything. I'll do a video on that. And I've been asked many times to do a costing uh, sort of overrun on this project, which I'll do. Um, now it's gonna include a clutch, isn't it? So I think we've gotta be realistic about these things. And it's important that everyone is realistic about dyno stuff, because, you know, stuff happens, it really does. Things break, things wear out. Uh, you've just gotta deal with it and move on. And that's what I'm, exactly what I'm gonna do. So maybe the next video is gonna be a clutch upgrade, who knows, I don't know what I'm gonna go for. There's loads of options. I mean, I could go for a stock one, but with a KO4, I might be pushing it, just that a little bit too much. Uh, things like Helix, but also the, I, I might go for the TTRS one, to be honest, I quite like the OEM feel. I don't want to go for a heavy, heavy pedal, which most Helix upgrades really do uh, make. So I think straight off the bat, I'm going to go for a TTRS one, but we'll see. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video. Not quite the dyno tuning video that you might have expected, but you know, oh, this is just how it goes, isn't it? So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.